Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27 says that it shall come to pass in that day and I believe that is that is the day for you today that the burden shall be taken off your shoulders whatever burden it is whatever has no brought you no weighing you down whatever burden it is shall be taken off your shoulder and the yoke whatever yoke it is you yoke from off your neck and the yoke shall be destroyed by the reason of the anointing and the anointing is the holy spirit the anointed one is christ jesus praise the hallelujah We want to look at you know this uh, topic you know uh, which is a Christmas you know message on uh, it's called uh, Jesus Christ God's gift to humanity. All right, Jesus Christ God's gift to humanity. Praise the Lord, Hallelujah. Now, um, this is uh, I mean the Christmas message is one that has been told uh, over centuries and over and all through the ages uh, about the birth of. Uh, of uh, Jesus Christ the Savior and it has been told all across you know, the world um, and you might uh, it might interest you to know that um, um, the Chris Christmas is celebrated all across the world except for uh, most Islamic you know nations and uh, perhaps you know, some um, uh, predominantly Buddhist countries like you know, China for instance However, you know, uh, the people in these you know, countries, uh, they do still celebrate it in one way or the other. But the vast majority of the people of the world, you know, they do celebrate, you know, um, this, um, um, uh, they celebrate Christmas. Okay, all right, yeah, yeah. So they do celebrate you know, this Christmas, celebrate all over the world. Um, it can be in different ways. For so many, it could be a case of... Um, um, using the Christmas, the Christmas for them could be just a time of relaxation. It's bank holidays, uh, you know. Um, it could also be a time of you no know, giving gifts as well, uh, spending time with family. Uh, in many cultures, in many places, in many countries, it's a time of you no know, eating. Uh, some people have got you know their own versions of Christmas, and so some of them would in certain countries they will probably do their Christmas especially on the twenty fourth. And then they will eat certain kind of meals. They eat certain twelve kind of meals, or twelve desserts, or so, or thirteen, you know, kind of meals, or thirteen desserts, or so, to represent it. Yeah, well, whatever the case, <laughs> whichever way it is being done. But um, one of the key things is that there is no such, call it, um, um, you know, um, I, I don't want to call it a religious you know, celebration, but then, but that's the best way I can explain it. That is celebrated across the world. All over the world than this Christmas, other than obviously you know the New Year, except for the New Year. So it tells you how much you know uh, this Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, is known and is celebrated across the world, across the world, and um, I will thank God for that. So again, and that is a witness to every human being, every human being. Uh, that uh, there is this day of the year, it could be for most people within, you know, the Eastern, um, West, Eastern Europe, uh, they do celebrate, you know, the Christmas, uh, uh, that is the Orthodox ones, I would say, around the um, 7th of January, around the 7th of January, yeah. So, um, but notwithstanding, whichever the case, I want us to understand that, you know, a witness, there is a witness of Jesus Christ, Christmas is about who? It's about Jesus Christ. People may uh, grow up, you know, talking about you know, Santa Claus or whatever it is, but just don't forget that the Christmas is about who? It's about Jesus Christ, the Savior. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, um, I'll quickly, you know, let's quickly go to the book of Luke chapter 2. You see, Christmas... What is Christmas about now? So what is Christmas about? I mean, we've seen that, you know, there's been a commercialization of Christmas because of the giving of gifts, you see, because of the giving of gifts, uh, which, again, you know, came from the scriptures uh, when they, about the, the wise men. And I want to please, you know, point out to you all uh, that are watching and to let you know that, you know, the wise men, they were, they were not three wise men. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, so they were not three wise men, but they were wise men the bible never said there were three wise men so people just assume 
that there are three because they presented you know, three sets types of gifts, uh, frankincense, you know, gold, and myrrh, but they were not three. Okay, so just for you to learn something today, I will not, you know, I will not uh, charge you for that. I will not ask you to pay any money for that, uh, for this uh, um, revelation, I'll call it. Praise God, hallelujah. And just as, you know, uh, I was talking to a fellow on Saturday, you know, uh, reaching out, you know, talking to him, about, uh, sharing the gospel with him. And it was, uh, he, he, had, he said he'd been to, he attended the Catholic, you know, um, primary school. So he was talking about, you know, the, uh, the forbidden, you say, you mean, you mean the apple that, you know, Adam and Eve said, no, it's not, it's not an apple. Okay, uh, so it's uh, it's a fruit. It's the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. Uh, so, so again, I want to let some of you know who may not know that that was not an apple, although it was just you know, in our children's you know, storybook we just put there. But some people have not graduated from there because it's not really carried out. So, but, which is understandable. But it's not an apple. It's the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. Praise God. Now, now going back again to uh, Luke chapter two. In Luke chapter two. I'll read verse uh, eleven because of time. Uh, it says, uh, for there is born, for there is born to you this day. We're talking about why, what is Christmas about? So Luke chapter 2 verse 11 says, for there is born to you this day in the city of David, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. For there is born to you this day in the city of David, a Savior. Who is Christ the Lord? Now there are three words that are used in this verse of Scripture. You have number one, Savior, Christ, and you have Lord. Okay, Savior, Christ, Lord. It says, "For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord." Now I just want to quickly, you know, um, sort of, you know, look at. I want to look at these three. Uh, words though these three um, words that was used to describe who Jesus it were used to describe Jesus I want to you know just to look at it the first one there is the word Christ now the word Christ means the anointed one okay the anointed one uh, it also means the Messiah now before I go to that the the, uh, the word anointed one means you no know, um, you know, somebody who has been endowed, consecrated, you no, know, and you know, empowered. Let me use that word, empowered by uh, the Spirit of God, by the Holy Spirit of God, to do something for God, purposely, totally for Christ. I mean, for for God or for God alone. Now, an example is in the book of Acts, chapter ten, verse thirty-eight. Acts ten thirty-eight. You no, know, it says, you "No, know, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth." with the Holy Ghost, with the Holy Spirit, and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. I'll read that again. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with who? With the Holy Spirit. So the anointing comes with who? With the Holy Spirit. And with what? And with power who went about doing good, healing all who were what oppressed by the devil, for God was it. So he came, Jesus is the anointed one, who came, who was born to set many captives free, who was born to, um, as it were, to bring about healing and deliverances. Uh, for all those who have been oppressed by the devil. So Jesus was born. He is the anointed one, anointed of God, by God, by the Holy Spirit, to carry out this particular assignment. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. And so there are so many other things again about him now. So, um, uh, you know, in, in the book of you know, Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27, Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27. Please you know, do bear with me. I'm getting a bit excited right now. Uh, you know, I'm getting very I'm getting a bit excited here, but I thank God you know, for that. It's so powerful. You know, uh, Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27 says that it shall come to pass in that day. And I believe that is that is the day for you today. That the burden shall be taken off your shoulders. Whatever burden it is, whatever has you no know, brought you, you no know, weighing you down, whatever burden it is shall be taken off your shoulder, and the yoke 
Whatever yoke it is to your yoke from off your neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed by the raising of the anointing. And the anointing is the Holy Spirit. The anointed one is Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. I'm talking about Christ now. now. So, is Christ. He is the one, okay? He breaks yokes. He alone destroys yokes. So, this is who was born to set you and I, to set humanity free from the yoke of sin. From the bondage and the yoke of what of sin, the burdens that come as a result of what sin. Now, Jesus you know, said in the book of you know, Matthew chapter 28, you know, um, forgive me, Matthew 11, 28, and that's the scripture I always you know. Um, I, I thank God, you know, talks about you know, Jesus said you know, that um, my, it says, "Come to me, all you who are burdened and are what who labor and are heavy laden." who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you what rest many are carrying so much load on them many are weighed down for because of so many things but Jesus who was born Jesus was born to take that weight to take that burden to take that yoke that burden that you have been laboring under you know uh, off your shoulders and off your neck, off your life. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Spiritually, there are some people who you see them, they're carrying, you know, they are carrying things, okay? Spiritually, they are so burdened. I mean, I remember, you know, a friend of mine who, um, you know, called me. Now, just be, 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 before he called me, that morning, early hours of the morning, the Lord, you know, showed me, you know, showed it to me, showed me this fellow, this friend of mine, he was carrying something on his head. He was carrying a heavy load on his head. So, so, and so, so out of the so he just called me because because I was then at, uh, at the office and he called me and says, "No, Clifford, man, I've been, I, you know, I, I'm, I, you know, I, I've been facing some some situations, and you know, I, I said to him, hey, 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 wait, 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 don't say nothing, don't say anything, don't say anything, don't say anything at all. Listen, just hold on. This is what the Lord showed to me before you called me." I saw you, you were carrying a heavy bird, a heavy load, something heavy, tall, massive on your head, on your head. And he says, Clifford, for the last three days, he's been, he said he's been having this you know, splitting headache. He has taken all manner of medications. He's gone to his GP. The GP has prescribed one of the strongest, you know, uh, you know, painkillers for him, but he, nothing. It's just not going. And I said to him, just you know, calm down. At the time, you know, we're having the, um, uh, the services, you know, um, um, you know, face to face, uh, yeah, um, live, in the, well, yeah, um, in, in the um, uh, somewhere around here in Brentwood. Uh, he came down and <laughs> so he was there in the service. That's why the service I laid hand upon him and prayed for him, and that you know, thing you know, left him and he never had to take them drugs anymore at all. He, he, he was completely delivered and set free from that time. This is the same Jesus who was born to set you and to take that burden. Okay, that you are uh, perhaps you no know, laboring under to take it from you, and it was by the anointing of the Holy Spirit of Christ upon me that I was able to pray that the Lord revealed that to me concerning this fellow. And just a couple of hours after he called me, he called me. Why? Because Jesus you know, really wants you know uh, wants to you know uh, to deliver him. From that, but it wasn't just a you know, thing about it, it was just a physical thing, but this was a spiritual thing. So, what I'm saying here is that Christ, you know, He is that one, He takes your burdens, He takes that you are laboring. He says, Come on to me, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come on to me, all you who labor and are heavy, one heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest, Jesus. Is offering you rest from all the burdens that you are um, that you are carrying, that you are laboring under. He wants to give you rest. It says in verse twenty-nine, it says, "Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden." Is light. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> My burden is light. Amen. Now, so, and 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 this is why Jesus Christ was born, my friend. He was born to take that burden off you. He was born to take that yoke off you. 
so that you do not labor under any demonic or satanic no yoke. No. But you take on his yoke. He says that my burden is easy. And my, my son said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, when you take on his yoke, praise God, his yoke is light and his burden is easy. Hallelujah. Easy. I don't want to use the word easy, peasy, but it is easy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because that's what he said. He says, and my burden is light. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. So this is who was born. This is who is, this is the Christ who was born. Like I say, he is also the Messiah. The Messiah, the Son of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, another, you know, um, um, we're talking about, so we've talked about the Christ here now. So let's look at, you know, the one of uh, Savior. Okay, Savior. Yes. Okay. Now, the word Savior then means deliverer and what? And preserver. Deliverer and what? And preserver. Now you, you know, now, now, now that takes us you know, back again to uh, the book of you know, Exodus when God uh, delivered um, his covenanted people, the Israelites, from the, uh, the tyranny uh, and the slavery of, uh, and the servitude of who? Of Pharaoh and, the, and, 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 and Egypt. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He brought them out. He delivered them from that slavery. Now, you must understand that in the sin, you know, humanity, we are born, you know, with a sinful nature. And because we are born, you know, uh, in, with a sinful nature, we are, uh, um, we have become, humanity has become a slave to what? To sin. And of which, you know, Satan the devil is the slave master. Okay, he's a slave master. So, just as you, know, you had, um, you know, uh, in the book of you no know, um, Hebrew, sorry, same Exodus, Exodus chapter one. If I read to you, verse chapter one, um, Exodus chapter one, very quickly. So, just to give you a bit of, just to paint a picture of what this kind of you know uh, slavery is all about. Um, Exodus chapter one. It says, you no. Know, um, I read from Exodus chapter 1, I read from verse 8. It says, Now there arose a new king over Egypt who did not know Joseph. And he said to his people, Look, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, lest they multiply and it happen in the event of war that they also join our enemies and fight against us and go up out of the land. Now look at verse 11, where I'm going to. It says, Therefore they set taskmasters over them to afflict them with their burdens. You can see the word burdens again coming here. To afflict them with their, what? With their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh's supply cities, you know, uh, Petom and Ramesses. Verse 12, but the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. Hallelujah, that's a powerful word. And they were in dread of what? Of the children of Israel. Your enemies will be in dread of you in the name of Jesus Christ. The more they plan their evil against you, the more you and I will multiply and will continue to grow in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? Because we have Christ in us in the name of Jesus. Now, now this was sort of, you know, the situation with the people of God, with, 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 uh, with Israel. But there came a deliverer. God sent Moses to deliver them out of what? Out of bondage. Now, in the same way, this is the Christ that was born. This is Jesus, the Savior who was born to deliver humanity, to deliver the whole of humanity, the over 8 billion people in the, world, in the planet, in the world today, to deliver each of you, each of us, from what? From the slavery of sin. Of which you no know, Satan the devil is the taskmaster, is the slave, you no know, slave master and the slave driver as well. Now, in the same way as you know the children of Israel were delivered, so God, so Jesus Christ is the anointed one, the one, the deliverer, the savior who can deliver you and I from what? From the tyranny of Satan the devil and all his forces that are um, that are poised at afflicting people, humanity, with what? With all manner of, of, of evil. 
with all manner of evil, because that is, that, is, that is what his modus operandi is, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus Christ came to deliver humanity. Now, why? Why do I say that? Because the Bible says in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 1, uh, 2 Timothy, I read verse 1, 2 Timothy chapter 1, Okay. Um, sorry, I'm there. First Timothy. I'm going to the right place. Um, where is that place now? Okay. I'm missing my, my text here. Um, yeah, well, so in the book of Second Timothy, so First Timothy says that who desire that all men be saved. Yeah, okay, sorry, First Timothy chapter 2. Thank you. First Timothy chapter 2 says, uh, verse 4, verse 4, verse, First Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, um, who desires all men, all, all men to be what? To be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Who desires? And how is that possible? God's desire is that all the 8 billion people currently right now living in this world, in this planet Earth, God's desire is that all will be saved. And it's only through his son, Jesus Christ, that that is possible, my friend. That this Christmas is about the Christ. It's about the what? Who? The Christ, the Savior, who came to save you and I from what? From the power of sin. Sin is, a very, sin is a powerful, it is sin that gives the devil dominion over a person. Sin in your life gives Satan, the devil, dominion over you and I, over humanity. And like I said, going back to the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 28, God says, let us create man, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have what dominion, praise God, let them have what dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over, you know, every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. And the verse 28 says, and God did what? Let's call it verse 28. It says, then God blessed them and said to them, be what? Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth. On the other side, the kingdom says, replenish the earth. Now, when you use the word replenish, that means there was something there before, and then you are having to now put it back, replenish. So to replenish the earth, now there's no time for me for us to talk about that. So um, to replenish the earth, praise God, hallelujah. And then and so, to fill the earth and subdue it. Now this is the term I'm talking about again. I use that term, I said subdue. Now subdue, please look at the English, the dictionary definition or the definition of the word subdue is using military might or force to gain control to, you know, to subjugate, praise the Lord, hallelujah, and opposition. So there are forces, but you need this Savior to give you and I that power to subjugate, to bring under control, to dominate, you know, these forces, the power of sin that keeps the devil, you know, uh, giving the devil a foothold over humanity. It is only with Christ Jesus, my friend. So still talking about, you know, uh, his position, his, you know, uh, you know, his, his, uh, his, can I, can I use what his role or his function as the savior? So the savior means what? Deliverer. Delivering from what? From the power of darkness. The Bible says, you know, who had delivered us? Colossians chapter 1 verse what? Verse 13, who had delivered us from the power? power of of that and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son so jesus christ was born to deliver humanity from the power the control the hold of the power of darkness so you must understand know, what the christmas is about my friend it's not just about you know, eating your chicken and your turkeys or whatever it is yes that is a celebration but the spiritual the meaning the reason for the birth of christ is was also as what i've just said is that you 
and the whole of humanity, us all, be delivered from the power of darkness. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13, I'll read it again to you. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13, and we are translated, translated, never to be, never to resume back, translated into the kingdom of his son. He has delivered us from where? From the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of his of the son of his lord so this is so so what we're talking about here is christ the savior now now the other on that you know aspect again you know what the savior means is that he's a preserver the word savior there means what preserver he preserves he preserves you know to preserve means you know to keep something alive you know so that it doesn't die you know so to keep protects the word preserver means protect. That is the name. If you look at so this is the this is the uh, the, the, the definition or the, um, the the meaning of that name savior. Because going back again to that you note, know, Luke chapter two, you know, verse eleven. Uh, for those of you who may have joined us, you know, very very you know uh, just a few minutes ago, we're looking at you know, the text. You no, know, Luke chapter two, verse eleven, and it says, "To you is born this day in the city of David a savior." Who is Christ the Lord? We're looking at these three words: Savior, Christ, and the Lord. So we've talked about Christ as who? As the anointed one, as also who? The, the Messiah. Okay, now we're looking at you know, also him as the what the Savior. I said Savior is means the two words a deliverer and preserver. We've seen him the deliverer. Now looking at you know, the preserver, he preserves, he protects. Praise Lord, hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of you know, Psalm chapter 91, from verse 1, it says, He that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the world of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, and my God in him will I trust. Hallelujah. He preserves you and I. He, when we are under him, when you come into Christ, under Christ, even the Bible says in the book of you know, Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs, what does Proverbs chapter 18, you know, verse 10 say? It says that the name, hallelujah, master about the name, that name, the name of the Lord is a what? It's a strong water. The righteous run into it and they are what? And we are saved. That was that is what that is protector, protection. Protection from what? Protection from the works of the devil, the attacks of the wicked ones. That is what you know who Christ is. This is who he is. This is a savior. He protects you and I from you know every plan of the enemy. He spares us, he keeps us from harm. The Bible talks about you no, know, he is the keeper. He is what our keeper as well. It's our keeper. He is a keeper. When you and I are sleeping. When you and I don't you know are driving or walking about, you know, something, you know, you don't know the plans of the wicked ones of the enemy against you and I, against humanity, not just you and I, against the whole of humanity. And that's why people just know you see them. I mean, you know, just over the news and the you know, internet, you know, oh, this person is dead, this person has died, this person has died. So these are not these are not like old folk. These are just you no know, people in their prime, you know, people in their prime, but they do not know this savior I'm telling you about. But I pray that you today would know him as your deliverer and also your what your preserver as well as a savior. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Now, very quickly, because of time, the other thing again is that you no, know, the word he used the word Lord. To you, this what you this is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is what Christ the Lord. So who's the Lord? Lord means the owner of your life, the one who you now live for the one whom you now you pledge allegiance to the one who matters most in your life the one who you adore the one who um what's the word to use uh, uh you're not ashamed of him at all but you live for him everything about you is about him praise the lord dear. and that is one of the things you know, the lord said concerning you know israel as a nation he said i brought you out of egypt i brought you out from slavery from the land of bondage so that you would serve me so that you would be a kingdom of priests unto me praise god so that is when when you so you are you are serving his purpose you are doing his own bidding praise god hallelujah not in a bad way in any way at all but in a good way as well praise god hallelujah so and so when you become when G, when you become a christian when you re, when when you repent of your sins jesus becomes what 
your Lord. Why? Because you have then received him into your heart, into your life to be your what? Your savior. When he becomes your savior, he also uh, becomes your Lord. You have to make him Lord. And what does that mean? Lord means I am you know, accountable to you and I submit to you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I submit to you. We all have no, everybody, you go to your workplaces, you're accountable to your manager, your line manager also, the company, you know, um, whoever is the head of your company or uh, whatever head of your organization, you're accountable to those persons. They say, okay, do this. Oh, yes, you have to do that. Report to work. Or so. Yes, you have to be there. So in the same way, you and I, when Jesus becomes our Savior, he then becomes our Lord. So we submit to him. We yield to him as well to do, to do his will because his will is good for us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, so he, he, because in, in doing that, you are then, you then become a sheep. He becomes your shepherd to lead you through this, um, um, to this very dark, spiritually dark, and wicked world that we live in. Praise God. You need it, my friend. We all need it. We all need it. I mean, we saw in the news today, um, uh, just in the past, I saw that, uh, that the country, United Kingdom, has flooded, I think, about 2 point something, 4, 8, is in debt of 2.48 trillion pounds. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. But, that's a burden the country is carrying. It's a burden. It's a huge burden the country is carrying right now. That Jesus can take that burden away from us as a nation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But he can take that burden away from you as well. You and I. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So what I want us to understand is that when he becomes the Lord of your life, you are serving him. You are, you know, adhering to him. This is his word. Obedience to his word gives you peace and gives you joy no matter the conditions no matter the circumstances praise the lord now something so powerful one of the scriptures that you know i was reading i've been reading this meditating on this you know, isaiah chapter 51 um because of time right now um um look at this um i think i sent it out today it says i even i isaiah chapter 51 verse 12 it says i even i I'm he who comforts you. Who are you that you should be afraid of a man who will die? And of the son of man who will be made like grass. It is he, the Lord, who comforts you and I. He comforts us. We're setting people whoever they are, whatever their status or their position in authority or whatever it is, you know, threaten you and I. The Lord comforts you and I. And he says, who is that man that you should be, you know, that, that you should be afraid of? Yeah, comforts you. Who are you that you should be afraid of a man? Praise God. Who are you that you should be afraid of? Which man is there that you should be afraid of? Of a man who will die? And of the Son of Man who will become, who will be made like what, like grass. So this is this is our God, and this God, the God, the Creator of the universe, the Creator, of the Maker of the heavens and the earth, wants to be your God. He wants to be your heavenly Father, and you can only do that when you receive the gift. Jesus Christ is the gift of God to humanity. He is God's gift to humanity, and that is why. Uh, John chapter 3 verse 16 says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not what shall not perish in that place called hellfire but shall have what everlasting life so my friends I want you to know that you know Christmas is about the Savior it's about Jesus Christ as the Savior the Lord and the Christ he is a Christ he is a Savior and he is Lord as well you can make him the, your savior. He can become your Christ. He can become Christ over your life. He can become also the Lord of your life to help you to navigate you know, through the murky waters of this world. And you can always be at the top of your of your life or your game or whatever it is that you're doing just because Jesus is in your life. That is what the Christmas is about. 
this is just no one aspect of it and we'll be talking about this more on friday but very very quickly i want to give you the opportunity right now to come to have and to receive this jesus christ as your savior first of all as a christ and also the lord of your life as well and all that i have said with and many more which we we'll also talk about as well christ will do that now for you he will deliver you from sin he will save you from the power of darkness, from the power, he will, he will save you from the power of sin, from sin, from the power of sin. He will deliver you from the power of darkness. He would also protect you as well. He would, he is the anointed one to take and to destroy, to heal and to destroy all the work of the devil and also to also direct you through life as well, guide you like as a shepherd that guides the flock, you know, to greener pastures. That is who Jesus wants to be in your life. So as we celebrate this Christmas, don't celebrate it without knowing the reason for this Christmas, why we celebrate Christmas. But for you to know, it's all about you know, Jesus becoming your Savior, the Christ over your life, and the Lord over your life. I want to pray with you right now because of time. Would you join me? Make this decision. It will be the greatest Christmas you've ever had. 2022, it will be a Christmas to remember that on this, this Christ Christmas, you actually celebrated Jesus as your Savior, your Christ, and the Lord of your life. Let us pray. Just repeat this prayer after me. That's all you have to do. A minute with all your heart. A minute with all your heart. And say after me, say, Dear God, I come to you today. I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I have sinned against you, and I have broken your laws. I have done them all in ignorance. Ignorance of your ways and ignorance of your word. And I ask you to please forgive me. And I'm sorry for all my sins. I'm sorry for all that I have done against you. And I ask you to please forgive me. Wash me clean of all my sins with the precious blood of your son, Jesus Christ. I repent of all of them and I forsake them. I believe that Jesus Christ, your only begotten Son, came into this world over 2,000 years ago, died on the cross for me to save me from my sinful nature and from sin. and to be the Lord of my life. Therefore, I receive you, Jesus Christ, into my heart as my Savior from sin and from my sinful nature, and to be the Lord of my life, and to be the Christ of my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I receive your Holy Spirit that I may live a victorious and a successful Christian life. Loving you, Jesus Christ. Living for you, Jesus Christ. Serving you, Jesus Christ, all the days of my life. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for accepting me as your child. For it is in Jesus Christ's holy name I have prayed. Amen. Amen. I'm just going to pray for you right now. Father, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you, Father, for these ones who have prayed this prayer. Your grace has brought them to this point, O oh Lord, my God, of making this decision. You drew them by your Holy Spirit to yourself, precious Jesus. And Lord, do I pray, O oh Lord, that that grace be multiplied upon their lives to keep living for you, to keep, O oh Lord, following you, to keep serving you all the days of their lives that are mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray right now, precious Jesus, that you baptize each of these ones with your Holy Spirit and with your fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Baptize them with your Holy Spirit and with your fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, baptize them with your Holy Spirit and with your fire in the name of Jesus Christ, that they will be on fire for you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That they would not compromise, O oh Lord, and not join, O oh Lord, even the fashion of this world, but rather they will stand for you. They will be on fire. A fire of your love, loving you, serving you, 
and letting the world know that you are their Christ, you are their Savior, and you are their Lord, our Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for this one. Bless them. Bless their families and all that concerns them as well. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I pray, O oh Lord, that multitudes, hundreds of thousands of people, even millions, will come to know you, Jesus Christ. Will come into a covenant relationship with our heavenly Father, our God, through, O oh Lord, their testimony, and through, O oh Lord, that which you have purposed to use them as vessels of, of honor to do for you and for your kingdom, to the glory of your holy name. We give you thanks, O oh Lord. Cover them, O oh Lord, space on board, and all that concerns them and their families with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Amen. I just want us to pray right now. You know, there are still so many people out there who do not know this Jesus. Please join faith with me right now. Let us pray that one way or the other, in any way that the Lord Jesus, our Savior, by his Holy Spirit, would convict hearts. Jesus said, no man can come unto me except the Father who sent me draw him. Let us pray. Father, draw people, draw sinners, O oh Lord, as Christmas is celebrated around the world, all over the world. Father, may, O oh Lord, many be visited by you. May many, O oh Lord, Father, receive the revelation of who you are, Jesus, the Son of the living God, as a Christ, as a Savior, and as Lord. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, draw them by your Holy Spirit. Draw them to your Son, Jesus. Draw them by your Holy Spirit. In the, in the mighty name of Jesus, draw them to your Son, Jesus Christ. May they know and may they, Father, one way or the other, through social media, whatever it is, O oh Lord, see, O oh Lord, what Jesus, what Christmas is about, and it's about you, Jesus, as a Savior, as the Christ, and as Lord over the lives of many, over those who would choose to follow you over those who will choose to repent of their sins, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And right now, I just want to pray right now, Father, for everyone, not only the sound of my voice, O oh Lord, that Jesus, you are the anointed one. You came, you are the anointed. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed you, Jesus of Nazareth, with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God and doing and for God was with was with you. Therefore, by that anointing, I decree right now, everyone under any afflictions of the evil one, by the anointed one himself, Jesus Christ, I decree that affliction over your life right now come to an end in the name of Jesus Christ. Because you have received Christ as Savior, because he is now, you are a sheep of Christ. He is your shepherd. Therefore, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, every attack and every affliction of the kingdom of darkness against you, I decree right now, come to an end in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we we'll give you thanks, Lord. Precious Jesus, you are also the Savior. Right now, thank you for saving each one, saving each one, saving them right now, delivering, delivering each one right now from the power, whatever other thing has kept anyone in a cycle of sin, returning back to sin all the time, or just can't, oh Lord, break, oh Lord, any kind of addiction or any kind of sin that it has held them captive. Tonight, I decree you by the Savior, Christ Jesus, I decree you are delivered in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, Jesus, you are also, as a Savior, you are the preserver. Protect each one. Protect each one from evil. As, uh, Psalm chapter 124, 124 says, know that you have not given us as a prey to the teeth of our enemies. Therefore, Father, protect each one. Anyone, O oh Lord, that the enemy, the devil, and his agents have marked for death or for destruction in this season, I decree and I cancel that, O oh Lord, evil cancel of death and destruction over your life or your families in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, Thank you, Lord. You preserve this one to the very end for your own glory, for your own praise, and for your own, O Lord, purpose in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that the Lord shall deliver us from every evil work and preserve us unto his heavenly kingdom. Thank you, Father. And I pray, Father, for, O Lord, each one here right now, Lord, that they will put their trust in you. Lord, that they will live, O Lord, under the shadow of your wings. Lord, that they will trust you. Lord, that they will live for you all the days of their life, submitting themselves to you, Father, to follow you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Thank you for answer to this prayer, so Heavenly Father. For it is in Jesus Christ's mighty name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Amen. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What a blessing, what a blessing, what a blessing.
thank you, thank you, thank you so, so much. What a privilege to again minister the word of life to you all that are part of this service. And those of you who are watching, you know, um, maybe at another time, I know that the Lord has done great things and I want to really congratulate you for what he has done already, you know, through this um, you know, prayer session. Now, I also want to reach out to those of you who gave your life to Christ in the course of the service. I want you to know that that's the greatest miracle, the greatest miracle ever, my friends. Listen, it is the miracle of what of salvation of one soul. Honestly, that is the greatest miracle there is. Not that no, we don't downplay you know the miracles of you know um, restoration, healings. No, we celebrate that. That's most. Importantly as well is the miracle of the salvation of one's soul. And for those of you who have made that decision to follow Jesus, have you know repented of your sins, I want to congratulate you. And there are four things that I will recommend that you start to do as a ministry and myself personally is number one, you start to attend a Bible believing teaching and preaching church. It must be a church that honors God, number one, they glorify jesus christ in all that they do they reverence the holy spirit the holy spirit is reverence not as an it not as a force but as a person the one in charge praise the lord hallelujah amen yes okay and they also emphasize on the baptism with the holy spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues praise the lord hallelujah amen yeah okay so there are so many people so many things that are happening you know um in so-called in the churches but please pray that the lord would direct you to the one that you should go to not the ones that are compromising talking about you know gay you know marriages no it's not it's not acceptable uh -huh. so we don't um the word of god is, is is the truth the bible says that the church of jesus christ the ground and pillar of truth we do not condemn you if you are gay or lesbian or whatever it is uh, i don't know what those other terms are but we are here to tell you that Jesus Christ is the Savior. <laughs> Your weakness may be that in you know, a gay or lesbian or whatever it is, no homosexual. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For some of us, it is drunkenness. For some of us, it is fornication. For some of us, it is no adultery. For some of us, it is no murderers. For some of us, it is no lying. But whoever you, whatever you it is, you are. Jesus, God does not condemn you. But Jesus Christ came to save you and I from sin. Every one of those are sins. Okay? Uh -huh. So it's a sin. So please understand that Jesus came to save you and I from sin. I was once a sinner and he saved me and I'm serving the Lord with such you know, joy and peace in my heart. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So that's number one, a Bible believing church. Number two, you must have a time of reading and studying the Bible. Please. It's so, so important. Okay. Yeah. Read the Bible, then study it as well. And please kindly I think there are notification bells. I'm not too sure how this is work now, but <laughs> the notification bells on this, so you can always see the search. You can only be reminded each time we are on, you can join in and you will be blessed and you will be touched and you will grow in your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ. As you log into this on Wednesday, every Wednesday and Friday, 7 p.m. GMT. Praise the Lord. So please, talking about the Word of God, you cannot grow in your relationship with God except through the knowledge and the understanding of God's word. So that's number two. Number three, you need to have an active prayer life. You must be prayerful. You cannot do it, please, without an active prayer life. You cannot. Jesus, in the book of Mark chapter 1, verse 35, the Bible says that a great while before dawn, he goes to a solitary place and there he did what? Pray. This is the Son of God, you know. <laughs> and in several places, even in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was praying. He prayed so much that the Bible says that the, the, the drops, the sweat, the, the drops of, you know, I mean, the, the sweat that came were now drops of what? Of blood. That is some major prayer. So, man, you need to pray. You need to spend time praying. Please, you have to spend that time. If you don't, if you are used to watching these late night movies, please, I beg you, don't do that anymore. Okay, all right? Go to bed on time and wake up on time so that you can really have that time of prayer. It's also important. So that's number three. Number four, you must tell, start telling people about Jesus Christ. Okay, yeah, all right. What he has done for you, 
The Bible says in the book of the Romans chapter 1, verse 60, I said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God, not the salvation to everyone who does us who believes. So please don't be ashamed of who Jesus Christ, what Jesus Christ has done in your life. And don't just keep it to yourself. Let's go out and tell people. We are Jesus' broadcast medium. I hope you know that. We are his advertisement medium. What he has done for us. The Bible says in the book of the Second Peter chapter 1, verse 9, it says that for you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, one that has been set apart what to do what to show for the praises of him who has called us out of what out of darkness into what? Into his marvelous light. So let us go there and shine the light you know, to his, to people who are in this you no know, dark world. So I want to thank you all so so very much. And um, and I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas. Okay, yeah, we'll be here again on Friday, and uh, we'll be talking about this. Carrying on with this, we'll be talking about the part two of God of Jesus Christ, God's gift to humanity. And I want to say thank you so so much for being a part of this uh, service today. And um, we have seen as a ministry, we have seen um, uh, our. Um, impact the impact of God's word and the release of God's word from this particular platform, from this you know altar, as it were, increased over last year and the years before. And I want to thank God for His grace. I want to see more people touched by the power of Christ through His word, through this ministry in the name of Jesus. So we want to appreciate all of you who have been a part of this ministry this year, 2022. And those who have been a part of it, you know, since, you know, whenever it is that you have joined, that the Lord connected you with us. We pray God's richest blessings upon you. I'll be praying more for you as well on Friday as well. Okay. Uh, so um, until we meet again on Friday, please continue to um, bask in the um, in the grace of God through who? through our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. There's no other way to do it. Okay. All right. Continue to celebrate Jesus. And let Jesus and Jesus will be glorified in your life and my life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. I declare the word of the Lord over you as we close. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. Lift his kindness upon you. Give you and your family and all that concerns you. Please on all sides in the name of Jesus Christ. I place the name of Jesus Christ upon you by faith right now. And that name shall speak for you and speak against your adversaries in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. A good night rest. And um, enjoy the rest of your week as well. God bless. Bye. Gospel Ministries every Wednesdays for Bible study and Fridays for revival service on Facebook, Instagram or YouTube via the link showing on the screen. Follow us on all our social media pages for daily inspiration from the Word of God.